Good morning, afternoon, or evening. I'm Ben, and this is Really Big Adventures. Today is our kickoff video, if you don't count the 30-second DJ Rex video that I uploaded a couple weeks ago, and I'm very excited. Before I get into the content of the video, which where I'll be talking about my car, I'd like to give a little bit of background. So, a few years ago, I had an idea that I wanted to start a channel mostly as a creative outlet. Uh, I live in Houston, Texas with my wife and my three kids, and, and we watch a lot of YouTube. We don't watch conventional TV. And there are channels that we watch all the time, Dunkey, Doug DeMuro, um, all sorts of them. There, there are a ton of them that we're subscribed to, and I really enjoy their content. And so I, I had ideas of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to put out into the intertubes. But as, as I actually worked towards it, I just had the hardest time hitting the record button. What you come to realize when you watch the videos, especially folks that have a lot of stuff uploaded, is that high quality content has an enormous amount of work behind it, not just in writing and recording, but these folks have learned how to use Final Cut. They, they understand Adobe Premiere, SEO, I mean, these are masters of the craft, despite the fact that it looks like content where people set up a tripod and went to record, there's a lot of work behind it. And if you think about it too hard, you'll never get anything recorded. So that's what today is, is we're going to put up a video, it'll be very raw, and hopefully we'll keep going and get better at it. So giving a little bit background about myself. As I was trying to decide what genre of videos to upload on this channel, uh, what I decided on was really big adventures, which is kind of a, a play on words because we love to go out and travel. But also, I'm six foot six, six foot seven, depending on the shoes, and it affects how we travel, what I'm able to do, lifestyle choices, all sorts of stuff. I love cars, uh, which I'll talk about more in a minute, but there are all sorts of cars I just can't fit in can't drive them. They're just a non-option. So really big adventures. We'll talk a little bit about how that affects what we're able to do, how we work around it, and things like that. Hopefully we can add some, some meaningful conversation and give some help to people that fit into that big and tall category. And it'll be entertaining to folks that aren't. They can see me trying to fit into things I don't fit in. So for a little bit of context, this is not a full-size door, but this is me width-wise in our bathroom door here. I don't fit very well. And this is me in a conventional door. There's probably three inches and then a few on each side. And this is my 2018 Subaru STI. It is a little bit dirty. Like I said, today was about creating content and getting it up. So please forgive the filthiness. So a little bit about this car. I have owned a 2005 WRX, 2010 hatchback STI, 2015 WRX, which was the same body style as this car. And then this one, which is a 2018 limited STI. The nice thing about most of these cars, I'll explain a little bit more about the older ones, but for the most part, I fit in them fairly comfortably. And we have three kids, and they, for the most part, can sit behind me when I'm driving it. And that's unique for a car like this. So you can see, I'm all the way back, because that's how I have to drive it, but I can still get them in there. And we had car seats for a while, and when they were reverse seat facing, it wasn't great, but they still fit in it. So a little bit about this car. From the factory, I think that they were rated 305 horsepower, something like that. I could be wrong, but it, you know, it's, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but they're an awful lot of fun to drive. They get okay fuel economy in 2018 they shifted the transmission, the, the center differential was changed. 
So this one's center diff, I think is purely electromagnetic, whereas before that they had a helical center with the electromagnetic part. They also added brake vectoring in 2015, and it really changed the way that they drive. It's a really nice car to drive. This one has been lightly modified. It's been reflashed. It has an off the shelf stage one tune and an aftermarket intake. The intake probably doesn't do a whole lot for power, but it makes it make fun noises. And, and that's part of why I own the cars. It's something that works for commuting. It's good with the family and it's just makes the right sounds. It's a lot of fun. So what I would say about owning a car like this, if it's your first time buying one, I would not suggest changing the bypass valve. It's important to this car that all of the metered air that goes past the mass airflow stay in the intake tract. When you put aftermarket blow off valves on them and you vent to atmosphere, the car will run rich and it wreaks havoc on it. These cars can be temperamental I know that they have a reputation for blowing up. I haven't ever had problems like that, but I mean, knock on wood, I've had a lot of fun. The 05's engine was probably getting close to needing a rebuild, but the rest of them have been pretty solid. The 2010 had some issues with the power steering pump and the AC compressor. The 2015 had issues with the throw out bearing. This one's been really solid. This has been a good car. Getting in and out of it. There's a little bit of a routine that I have, but on my wife's 2020 Ascent, I have to do the same thing. So for things, first things first, I will sit in the seat. And then I swing my legs in. And it's not the easiest thing in the world, but once I'm in, it fits quite nicely. And it's comfortable. I can see out of the windshield on this car better than I can the Ascent. The, the problem with the Ascent is that the sight line for the windshield is so low that when this is down, I can't see stoplights. A couple of thoughtful things that they've done here on the interior. A big one is this flat bottom on the wheel. Now the wheel in this car is aftermarket. It's, it's an OEM Subaru piece, but it is not the wheel that came with the car. But the leather wheel is the same design. It's just leather instead of Alcantara. It... The flat bottom wheel makes it a lot easier to get in and out of the car. The 2005 and the 2010 models were significantly smaller, at least on the inside, than this car. The 2005 was a challenge to find a, a comfortable seating spot. I really enjoyed that car. It was a lot of fun to drive. The 2010, I, I didn't like as much. I thought it was a beautiful car. But from a, a driving standpoint, that car really would have benefited from a, a rear sway bar, a larger diameter rear sway bar. And I believe the special edition version of that car had a larger sway bar. I haven't ever had a chance to drive one. So without going too much further into the weeds about this car, it splits the difference really nicely between being a sports car and a sporty car and something that the family can live with. Like I mentioned before, we're able to put the three kids behind us. My wife and I can sit next to each other. And if the trunk does not have the space that we need for luggage, I can throw the roof box that I have on this car or on the Ascent. So it makes it very versatile. And I really appreciate that about the car. This version of the car also came with colored seat belts, Recaro seats. And like I said, I'm very tall, but I'm also big. I weigh 360 pounds. And I fit in, I'm fine. Going back to the performance of the car, this one has, like I mentioned, the off-the-shelf Cobb tune and the aftermarket intake. And I did that mostly for the sound of it, and I'll start it up and rev it a little bit. But if, you've, if you're buying for the first time and you want that sound that you've heard in the Fast and the Furious movies, there's no shame in that. You modify your car the way that you want to. Uh, the aftermarket intake removes a silencer from the factory intake and so your factory blow off, or sorry, your recirculation valve ends up being very loud. Every time that you shift, it sounds almost like an aftermarket blow off valve. If you absolutely have to have an aftermarket blow off valve, like an HKS super sequential or something like that, 
you'll need to go and get the car tuned and they'll probably have to use a manifold absolute pressure tune as opposed to math. Otherwise, you're going to have that issue with it running rich. And when these cars start to have problems, it, it kind of snowballs and it sours people on them. So I would recommend aftermarket intake, appropriate tune, and then just make sure you use the right gas. If you've tuned for 93, use 93. If you're tuned for 91, use 91. Here's the engine startup. digital boost gauge. Now with the engine unloaded, it's not going to build boost. It'll come out of vacuum, but that's it. So the aftermarket parts on this car are the tune, the intake, the, the boost control solenoid has a, an aftermarket parent part. The shift lever is a carboy part, so are the bushings. It has a I have to look at the tag. An in focus shift boot and brake boot. I think that's basically it. Oh, and then the OEM STI RA steering wheel, which I absolutely love and would buy 10 more times. The driving dynamics of this car are pretty fantastic. It is a little bit twitchy when you're trying to stay in the lane. So, this is not a car that you especially at speed, you don't drive it with one hand. You want to keep both hands on the wheel. But if you enjoy that kind of driving and you like being involved, this is perfect. That's why I traded in the 2015. It got great fuel economy. And in general, it was an engaging car to drive, but it just was missing some of the, the dynamics that this car has. The clutch on this car is less forgiving. Even after all these years of driving these cars, I still kill it periodically. But the trade-off is that the, the car is very, very quick to pick up revs. It's fun to shift. The other thing to be aware of with these cars is that if you get a six-speed manual on the WRX, it is not the same transmission as what's in this car. The WRX's six-speed is an evolution of the five-speed that they've been building for a very long time. And it's a good transmission, but the linkage is cable actuated, and it feels a little weird. It is not, I, I didn't like it. We added aftermarket parts to the shifter in the 2015. It was a six speed manual and it shortened the throws and it stiffened up the bushings. But by the time we were done, it just, it, it still wasn't quite right. And I didn't enjoy it. That was one of the reasons I got rid of it. The other thing that I would be aware of with the WRX is that it has a very strange rev hang and I believe it's an emissions feature, but if you're used to driving manual transmissions and you go and drive it for the first time, you're gonna notice one, two, two, three, your, your shifts are gonna be off because the revs aren't gonna drop the way you expect them to. A reflash fixes that, but I, I didn't get used to it until after I had fixed it and gotten rid of it. That's pretty much what I have for this car today. We'll do another one for the Ascent. I will also be uploading another video. We probably won't do it on this channel, but we're building a Lamborghini Sian uh, Lego Technic set. Looking forward to that. But we'll link it eventually, probably. Anyway, thanks for watching.